Where did Dan Gross fly off to? You definitely haven't seen this. White man can jump? Another chin about the rim. Question of the day. Is this hide and seek or lost and found? Mark McClung's dunk from Street Dunker and another new dunk by Jordan Kilgannon. What do you think will happen next? Dan Gross plays dunking like a video game and has leveled up his character to the maximum stats. People can't jump like that. This actually applies not only to Dan, Lepek sometimes does the same. It's as if they have springs in their legs or gravity is just a word for them. Dan dunks so effortlessly that it looks like a routine layup in his performance. Take this 360 between the leg for instance, if he tries a bit harder, he could dunk up to his elbow. I'd love to see that. His jump height and technique are at a very high level. I can say this confidently because I've already seen such feats from him. As I've said a million times, I and many dunk fans around the world would like to see Dan Gross at dunk contests more often. But that's not all that Dan has shown us. In the previous episode, he surprised us with unusual pass for the wind dunk. This time he went even further and maximized the challenge for himself. You either need to calculate your throw perfectly for the ideal bounce or you just need to be Dan Gross who seems to know exactly which buttons to press. If you think you've seen everything in dunking, then what would you call this? I'm still trying to understand what happened. Polish dunker Philip performed the reverse upside down dunk from one leg. And I can barely say it, yet he did it. Yes, the rim is clearly below standard, but the execution technique is high level and gives hope that this dunk could be formed on a standard hoop. Who can do this now? I think Jordan Sutherland is up to the task. This is what you call dunk art. Upside down dunks have been getting more popular lately. For instance, even in our last episode, we discussed this dunk from other athletes. Let's choose a favorite right now. I'm waiting for your your choice in the comments. I think you all have seen the legendary movie White Man Can't Jump. Now take a look at this. Donovan Hawkins videos don't often appear on social media, but each time they do, it's a banger. It seems like if someone dreams about dunking, it probably looks something like this. I don't want to believe this is the regular rim, otherwise it makes me uncomfortable. After seeing this, it makes you want to go straight to practice. Who do you have to be to dunk like that with under both legs dunk from self pass? I like his style. Which of his dunks do you like the most? It's hard to choose, but personally, I love a simple windmill of an alley-oop. When it's dunk at that phase of the jump, it's the best feeling. Another chin over the rim. This flyer's name is Meisha. He really jumps high and has several unique aspects that we can observe. Firstly, he can jump both off one foot and off two, which is very rare nowadays, of course. One foot jumps predominate. But he also stands out by dunking with the same hand as the foot he jumps from. Meaning, if he jumps off his right foot, he dunks with his right hand. This is even rarer nowadays. Of course, we must mention Kristaps Dargais, who made a name for himself pretty precisely because of such uniqueness and elite dunks with this configuration. With such a set of qualities and a seemingly decent arsenal, he should be winning contest after contest. But here again we come to the big mental difference between practice and competition. At practice you can dunk anything any way you like, as we've seen a thousand times, but only a few can perform at the same level against strong opponents. It reminds me of some comments that the same dunkers participate in FIBA 3x3. But last year Dunk Elite in collaboration with FIBA 3x3 organized a Dunk qualification where anyone could participate and the winner got the chance to compete with professional Dunkers in the main contest. Mattia was also on this court. Here are the best Dunks participants managed to perform. Mattia is a good jumper and I hope he becomes a good Dunker in the future.
The greatest concentration of dunkers is, of course, in the States. They often gather together and hold crazy dunk sessions. One of Jordan Kilgannon's partners, Travis, with whom he frequently trains. At one of these training sessions, Travis went to another level with an extremely complex and spectacular dunk. Hide and seek with a two-handed finish. First of all, I don't remember anyone dunking it with two hands before him. And secondly, let me explain the difference between hide and seek and lost and found. In the first, the ball is dunked with the other hand, unlike lost and found, where the dunk must be made with the same hand that threw the alley-oop. These are basically the differences, but what do we call Travis's dunk in this case, if we base it on the very first lost and found dunk, which was done at 360 and considering the original execution as such, then Travis's dunk is hide and seek simply because there was no 360 spin. Write in the comments how we should call this dunk, right? In any case, the dunk is extremely powerful. Its final phase reminded me of the blind dunk, which a subscriber of my channel invented and I successfully executed it. This year's NBA dunk contest was a facepalm. I just couldn't bring myself to watch it in full after seeing the best dunks. One of them was undoubtedly this double up X with a ball loss in mid-air by Mac McClung. It was stylish and unusual for an NBA dunk contest, but street dunkers have long surpassed this stage. The dunk was first completed back in 2015 by Jordan Kilgannon. It seems like all the dunks you can possibly imagine have already been done by him, including the windmill with a tap off the backboard that he did the day before yesterday. Coming up with a completely new dunk is no easy task. Write your ideas in the comments. Recently, one enthusiast also replicated this dunk on a street court. It looked pretty good too. In reality, the dunk is not very simple, but not overly complicated either. It's a great example of how to cleverly and without much technical intricacy make a basic double up X more complex, a move that no longer surprises anyone. This element gave new life to the dunk. 